Hi, this is Teresa Martin from Lower Cape TV, and we are here for another episode of COVID Conversations on the Cape. With me today is State Senator Julian Sear, who is the spokesperson for the Cape Cod Reopening Task Force. Welcome, Julian. Hi, Teresa. Good to be with you. So Memorial Day has happened. Fourth of July is on the horizon. What's happening? So, you know, I, I think uh, I'm cautiously up from a, a public health metrics perspective um, and also from a business perspective um, that, you know, if you look at uh, any of these metrics, um, we, we, we're, I'm cautiously optimistic that we're going to have a, a summer season. Uh, so first, the public health surveillance, um, we see a continuing decrease, uh, decreasing trend of um, cases here in Barnesville County. Uh, you see that also on Nantucket uh, and, and also Dukes County, which is Martha's Vineyard. Um, and actually broadly in Massachusetts, the trends are going in the right direction. Um, and we're not seeing that in other states, um, states that have opened up sort of too quickly. Uh, other regions of the country um, are seeing a spike in cases, and, and that's what, what you'd expect. Um, and then on the reopening front, we're, in now, we're now in phase two of the governor's reopening plan. Um, and really in phase two, that's when a number of the uh, sort of economic activities associated with hospitality and tourism, right, which is the bread and butter of our economy, especially this time of year, um, those are now possible. You know, outdoor dining at restaurants, leisure accommodations, uh, hotels and motels and short-term rentals. Um, so things are starting to open up. Uh, actually, this past weekend was sort of our, our first weekend in phase two. Um, and, and broadly, it seems that, that things have went well. You know, businesses are certainly having to adjust, uh, you know, to the new normal. Um, my friends who work in restaurants and in hospitality, uh, you know, folks, you know, folks are certainly tired, right? It's sort of the first weekend, you're, you're trying new things, you're, you're putting in new systems in place. Um, but I think broadly, we're hearing that, you know, the public is following the uniform um, health guidelines that are out there, uh, that people are being respectful, they're being patient, um, you know, and, and, and it was, uh, it was even a little bustling uh, this weekend, at least here on the Outer Cape, um, but in a way that, that felt responsible and, and, and safe. So I, I think we've got to, you know, look, we've, we've got to keep up what we're doing. Uh, if you look at um, when the COVID-19 pandemic kind of first emerged, or, we were, or rather we were very aware of it in Massachusetts, you know, in mid-March, there was a lot of concern about the population influx um, that we were seeing. Um, and now we not only have anecdotal information about that, but we actually have some data, you know, water use levels, uh, you know, comparing April 2020 to April 19, looking at the traffic. Uh, you know, we saw, you know, a significant population influx starting in mid month in, in mid March. And that influx really has continued. The real concern, right, was that this influx in population would lead to community spread uh, here on the Cape and the islands. Um, and the health data shows that that didn't happen, um, which means that the people who came here were, were following the public health guidelines, were, were taking personal responsibility. Uh, and so we need to just make sure we're doing now is that we're keeping that up. So let me ask the question that's everyone's favorite summer question. What are the real rules for the beaches this year? So the real rules of the beaches are actually pretty common sense um, and, and, and align with the basic four rules. You know, it starts with those basic four rules that everyone should know, but they're repeating, right? Uh, you know, keeping your doors, covering uh, your, your face, particularly your nose and your mouth, when you can't be apart from others. Uh, Washing your hands surfaces frequently um, and being vigilant for symptoms and staying, you know, staying home if you're sick. Um, so that applies to the beach as well. Uh, asking people to, to cover their their nose and mouth, particularly when they're in transit to the beach. Right, you're walking on that little path. Um, you know, asking that people uh, are in group, toweling groups uh, of no more than ten, um, and that you keep a distance of twelve feet uh, between between toweling areas between toweling. It's groups. a great phrase. I've never heard it put yeah. that way. Toweling areas. Um, you know, so, so, so pretty, pretty common sense, you know, look, you know, our, our beaches are, we have some of the most beautiful beaches I would argue in the world. Um, you know, this is the open Atlantic ocean, particularly, you know, in our neck of the woods, Teresa. Um, and, and there are precautions and, and steps you need to take yourself safe from, you know, from, from rip tides, from the ocean waves, you know, putting encounters with marine mammals, uh, Marine, not mammals, but marine mammal seals, and also other marine entities like sharks. Um, and, uh, and and now these are the precautions we need people to take as well. So you know, just like just like you bring sunscreen to the beach, 
um, and you're, you know, being a maybe, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, staying in about three feet of water. Uh, that's what we're asking folks to do, you know, with, um, you know, uh, reducing risk for COVID-19. And is it consistent across towns, across state, across seashore beaches? Yes. So really what we've sought to do, you know, with this Cape Cod reopening task force is making sure that we're speaking with one message. Um, the governor and his administration are establishing the rules, the, the timing of the reopening, um, what's sort of able to reopen when. They're setting the rules of the road. And our job really has been, yes, one, to sort of communicate up to the administration and make sure that Cape Cod specific uh, needs and considerations um, are looked at, but then from the public facing perspective to make sure the public has consistent, uh, accurate information to follow. You know, uh, many of our, you know, certainly our visitors and, and many of our, our residents, especially seasonal residents, don't see this place, right? They don't necessarily see the difference between Truro and East Ham or Yarmouth and Mashpee. They view this place as Cape Cod. And so Cape Cod has to be speaking with one voice to make sure that we can get um, that, that good public health mess that people know what to expect uh, and they know what they can do to keep themselves and their safe and everyone around them safe. Are any of the towns or other entities l limiting parking access as a means of controlling number of people? So, um, so yeah, when we talk about the beaches, right, we've been really um, firm in making sure that sort of consistent rules of the road as far as the public health practices, that wherever you go on Cape Cod, you know what those are. Um, and then the actual management of the beach access, which really is about parking, um, has been up to uh, the individual towns. Um, there has been some, um, some, some limitation of parking depending, you know, on, on what the beach looks like, right? Some parking lots are really kind of crammed in and tight. Others are really, you know, um, you know are, are much more spaced out. Uh, the National Park Service has been a terrific partner. They've kept their beaches open for the entire duration of, of, of the pandemic. Um, and they'll continue to. And, you know, we've had a few nice beach days, uh, you know, in June and, and, you know, broadly have not heard, um, you know, not, not heard the sort of stories that would make you really concerned. Uh, I, I think that the public is taking this uh, seriously. They're acting and responding. We're going to continue to, to do that. And if they do do that, we're going to see them and we'll be able to keep everyone safe. How about restaurants? Are you, are they, do you think most restaurants are feeling safe themselves in opening? Are they finding a balance? Is there enough business for them to open? Kind of what are you hearing and what are some of the guidelines for restaurants? This is really difficult for restaurants. Um, you know, and I know this firsthand. I spent more years of my life waiting on tables than any other pursuit. You know, folks may know my family for 30 years. Um, you know, and, and, and this is, this is tough, right? Because you got to change, you know, options in your protocols, right? That you set up, up to, to service, you know, now doing that, maybe when you're doing it in the parking lot, um, you know, that, that's been a hurdle. Um, you know, certainly there's some things that I'd like to see us do at the legislative level that'll make it easier for restaurants, particularly around um, being able to take out options um, as it relates to liquor, uh, and, and some other some other ways we can support them. Broadly, though, I'm seeing restaurateurs and restaurant workers really stepping up, being very creative. Um, you know, initially in May, so those first few weekends, we heard some some of those horror stories, right, of the, the entitled customers, which you know anyone who spent any time yes. in the hospitality industry on the Cape um, knows they exist. Uh, but um, we haven't heard a lot of that. You know, I, I was uh, walking down Commercial Street this past weekend, and I you know checking in with my friends who you know are the hosts or, or, or waiters. Um, and they said, it, you know, it was a busy weekend, um, you know, certainly the capacity is down. So the number of tables you're turning over is less because you have to have the distance. Uh, I think it's going to be a very challenging summer, uh, but I'm cautiously optimistic that we'll have some level of business that will enable folks to, um, you know, to get through what's going to be a muted season. Uh, but it is tremendously difficult. Uh, and I really admire, you know, everyone in this industry, you know, especially the workforce who's really stepping up. Um, you know, to make this happen in a really difficult environment. The workforce is a question I had because we have no guest workers this summer, right? So, so, um, so we have some guests. So, so, so um, the, the seasonal workforce sort of comes from sort of three places here. Um, one are folks who are sort of in the country already, right? You know, friends of mine who maybe spend the winter in New York or Palm Springs and come here in the summer and, and bartend away on tables. Um, then you have the H2B visa program. Um, and that's primarily the program that a lot of Jamaican folks uh, come through. 
The way that the H2B program is set up is it's actually a three-year visa. So a number of these workers um, will be here in the summer and then we'll go to a, a winter resort like in Stowe, Vermont and work there and then come back. Um, so some of those folks actually are here. Um, the, the, the chunk of seasonal workforce that we're largely not getting this summer is the J-1 visa students. Um, these are students uh, from all over the world, but um, mostly around, you know, these days it's, it's Eastern Europe um, and, and those have been curtailed. My sort of hope, um, and in part because of travel restrictions and, and, a, and a whole host of concerns that are, are warranted, um, my hope is that we have a, a little bit of a, a right sizing, right, of the workforce. We're going to have a muted season. Um, people are going to be doing less business. There's going to be less people here, um, you know, and, and so hopefully in the best case scenario, there's a bit of a right sizing there. Uh, but, you know, so we're not seeing some of our traditional seasonal, other parts of our seasonal workforce um, have been here and, and you know, it, if you're dining out, there's the mix. For someone going to a restaurant, what what are the things that people want to be most aware of? So you want to have a kind of mask on you, um, particularly when you're when you're kind of you know going from entering the entering the space. This is outdoor space right now. Um, when you go to use the bathroom, uh, something like that. Um, but, but otherwise, you know, I patronized several, you know, um, restaurants and sat outside and, 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 uh, was served. Um, and you know, it, it, it's sort of, there's just more space between the tables. Uh, it's, it's sort of the biggest difference. Um, you know, a lot of, you know, m much of what's being served, um, is currently, you know, with, with, uh, paper and plastic and things that are kind of better from a public health perspective right now. Um, and I think we really need to do is, is, you know, under, ask people, you know, who feel comfortable and everyone's doing their own sort of risk assessment here and that's important. But, you know, if you do patronize a, a restaurant, you know, go, um, please be sure to tip very generously. You know, I'm really, I'm really worried about our tip workforce who, you know, in, in a traditional summer make, you know, make enough money in these sort of short eight weeks, 12 weeks um, to sustain themselves, you know, for the rest of the year. Uh, and so I'm really worried about that. I'm really worried about uh, the workforce, you know, my, my friends in, in the restaurant industry, you know, my peers, we, we, we have a, a demographic challenge here, right? We need young people to stay here. Um, so if, if you do feel comfortable going out to a restaurant, um, you know, be, be sure to tip generously. Are we seeing any of that uh, trend that some parts of the country say they're seeing that because of the unemployment $600 stimulus component it's hard to get people to go back to work. I, I think there is some hesitancy uh, from, from workers in wondering, you know, what's going to happen, right? In a seasonal economy where, you know, you only have a, a few short weeks to make a living, um, if it's going to be sort of a, a, a muted season, um, you know, and a, a real concern about are they going to be able to get help kind of, you know, after Labor Day, right after Columbus Day. Um, and and so, so that's definitely there. Um, most of the folks I talk to, though, are, are sort of eager to work, um, and, and I think increasingly it seems like there, there's business. You know, I, I think that, 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 you know, if you just look at how this past weekend went, um, people are out and about, and so um, it, it, may, it may be busier than I think we were expecting it would have been, um, you know, just, just a few short weeks ago. The real challenge, though, is that, you know, are people going to take personal responsibility? Are they going to, you know, conduct themselves in, 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 in in a way that's going to keep themselves and their families safe and, and keep our workforce and our community safe. Um, and, and, and so far, so good. We're, we're seeing, I think, more responsible behavior here in Massachusetts and here in Cape Cod um, than, than maybe in other places, unfortunately, we've seen you know, throughout the country. I mean, I went to uh, the March in Orleans, and I think every single person I saw had on a mask. I was there, too. And, uh, well, that, that was marvelous. That was yeah. pretty incredible. I've never seen anything like that on Cape Cod in Orleans. And yet people were still, despite their passion, were still being safe and responsible. And I, and I think the vast majority of folks are. And what we need to make sure that we're doing from a, you know, from, from a task force perspective is getting a uniform, consistent message out there. So um, the public, particularly our visitors and our seasonal residents, uh, understand what the rules of the road, road are and, and can follow those guidelines to keep themselves and their families safe and to keep everyone else safe. Well, in about the one minute we have left, is there any message the task force would like to give for July? Um, so, I mean, you know, we're, we're currently in phase two. We're hoping that we're able to, you know, um, 
if, 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 the, if the trends continue in this direction and the public health surveillance looks the way it does and continues these downward trends, um, then we'll be able to move into phase three, uh, which, which provides additional options, you know, indoor, indoor outing instead of just outdoor outing, I'm sorry, indoor dining instead of outdoor dining. Um, so we're cautious, optimistic there, but really just want to make sure that um, people are following the guidelines, uh, you know, that, that, that we are now open uh, in many ways. Uh, to be patient with us as we figure it out um, and to really, really thank people for supporting uh, our community and supporting our, our workers and our businesses. Uh, this is a tremendously difficult time um, and, and, and your patronage really is going to make a difference uh, for folks being able to ride this out. This is Teresa Martin from Lower Cape TV and we have been here with a COVID conversation about the Cape Cod Reopening Task Force with its spokesperson, State Senator Julian Sear. Thank you very much for being with us today.